Hi everybody, Robin Robinson again. Welcome back to the Complete Whiskey Course Video Edition. Uh, today we're going to talk about Irish whiskey. Now, if you remember from last time, we talked about Scotch whiskey and we used our good friend this little map of whiskey around the world here. So this is what we call a taxonomy, right? It just kind of gives us a visual representation of what whiskey looks like. Might even be easier to kind of look at it this way right here. Whiskey is on the top. The first level are all the countries that make whiskey, and the ones that are in yellow are the five largest whiskey-making countries, of which one of them is Ireland, okay? And then when we get to the layers below that, it becomes much more complicated, which is why whiskey starts arguments. We can't really agree on what exactly whiskey is, okay? Now, when we're talking specifically about Irish whiskey, we're talking about this. So let's get focused down into this particular little map right here. Okay. So all the whiskey that comes out of Ireland is called Irish whiskey. Like all the whiskey that comes out of Scotland is called Scotch whiskey, right? There are three types of whiskey made in Ireland, right? And if you blend those three types together, you'll get a blended Irish whiskey. Just like if you blend different types of Scotch whiskey together, you get a blended Scotch whiskey. So it kind of follows a similar style. It's the three in the middle that I really want to focus on right here. As you can see on the very top, it's single malt whiskey, which is you know familiar again from Scotland, right? Then you have single grain whiskey, which we noticed in Scotland has that designation as well. But underneath here, the third one, that's the one that's uniquely Irish. That's called Irish pot still whiskey. But Robin, you said, I saw your pot still distillation thing and everything is made in a pot still. That is correct. But pot still whiskey in Ireland is unique to Ireland. And here's why. Malted whiskey is what? 100% malted barley, right? Single malt whiskey means 100% malted barley whiskey from a single distillery, okay? This is malted barley. And malted barley, we'll go into that in another chapter, uh, and I'll kind of walk you through what malting actually means. But it's really all about how to get the sugar out of the inside of the grain in order for the distiller to use it, okay? However, in Irish pot still whiskey, it's a combination of malted barley and unmalted barley. And unmalted barley doesn't go through the entire malting phase. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is the tax man, okay? So when we start focusing on what is the, the history of whiskey in the Western world from Ireland uh, to Scotland to Canada, the United States, it's really about three people. It's about the farmer who had additional grain. It's about the distiller who actually took that grain and turned it into a val very valuable resource. And then it was the third was the tax man in the form of the king or the prince or the lord or essentially the government or the state that was looking to get additional revenue from that farmer distiller and therefore by imposing a lot of different types of taxes was able to control that particular enterprise. In this case, it was distilling. However, the reason for unmalted and malted barley, malted barley was primarily what the farmers were using uh, to make their whiskey. But then the British, uh, the English government, was imposing an enormous amount of taxes on them, and it was a way to sort of subjugate both Scotland and Ireland. And in doing so, forced the farmers to change their recipe. Now, the recipe was 100% malted barley. That's kind of what came out of there that they sort of got the flavor for, the taste for. But the English government was taxing the malt. So they were taxing the malt. Anytime you made the malted barley, you went through a process, a revenue agent or a tax agent could come and actually measure that and then tax you based on the amount of malt barley, malted barley that you made. So what the Irish farmers started doing, they said, well, screw that. If you're going to tax me on malted barley, I'm going to throw some unmalted barley in there as well. And that became the tradition of Irish pot still whiskey. So when we define Irish pot still whiskey, first of all, it's a whiskey that can only be made in Ireland and be called that. Now you can make something similar to that here in the United States. And there is a guy up here 
uh, in New York State, uh, a guy named Brian McKenzie uh, at Finger Lakes Distilling, who's making an Irish pot still style whiskey. But Irish pot still whiskey is unique to Ireland, and it is a combination of malted barley and unmalted barley. Now, let's go back into the history of Ireland uh, just a little bit. As so, And here's one of the things that we can kind of like, we'll focus on. Whiskey started in Ireland, right? So you know, we're going to give it up to our friends in Scotland, but it pretty much started in Ireland. There's a lot of historical data that actually points to that. It moved to Scotland very quickly. Um, and eventually what happened in the ironies of history is that Scotland became, at, you know, at, you know, for the most part of the 20th century, the purveyor of whiskey in the world. So they kind of like they turned the tables. Something happened in Ireland that actually uh, forced the entire, uh, that actually compressed or actually depressed uh, the entire uh, Scottish uh, um, or the entire, the entire Irish whiskey production. At one time, they were on the top of the world. It was John Jameson and his son, his son, uh, his son William Jameson, Peter Rowe, Powers, um, a few others that were concentrated in Dublin and were making what was called the Dublin style, which was Irish pot still whiskey. There was whiskey being made in other parts of the country and in Northern Ireland. There was bush mills up in Northern Ireland. In Ireland, there was cork distillers, and there was Tullamore Dew, pretty much in the center of the uh, of the of the island as well. And then a series of events happened in the early 20th century that pretty much killed the entire Irish whiskey industry. Um, one of them was uh, the Irish uh, fight for independence, and they're independent from England. The second one was prohibition. Uh, the third one was um, their reluctance to change the style and their mode of delivery. And the four of those things pretty much knocked Irish whiskey like off its kilter for the most part of the 20th century. So at one point, they had about 250 or up, up to 400 distilleries at, at the beginning of the 19th century uh, in, uh, in Ireland. By the time we got to the end of the 20th century, uh, we were down to two. Right, we had Middleton down here in Cork, and then we had Bushmills up in uh, in Northern Ireland. In 1987, uh, Cooley was started by uh, John Teeling, uh, a little bit north of uh, of uh, Dublin, and that became three distilleries. And they actually make all of the, the Irish whiskey that we're drinking right now. Let's say 99 percent of it. Now, what's been happening in the 21st century are all these brands are actually starting to pop up and brand new distilleries are opening in Ireland as well. Very much like, you know, sort of like very similar to the craft movement, craft whiskey movement here in the United States. So what's a couple examples of these, right? So let's talk about specifically, um, here you go. So this is called Method and Madness, and uh, this is from the Middleton uh, Distillery right here, and this is a great example of Irish pot still whiskey, single pot still Irish whiskey. So this is a combination of, and you can uh, unfortunately you can only buy this up at actually at their distillery. I don't think it's uh, for sale yet in the open market, um, but this is pretty crazy. This is matured in sherry and bourbon barrels and finished in French chestnut as well, but it's a combination of malted and unmalted barley, okay? Here is a great example. Here's Napogue Castle. Uh, it's an excellent whiskey. It is a single malt Irish whiskey, which means it's 100% single malted barley that's being used in there. Now, this is being sourced from different other distilleries in there and branded as Napogue Castle. So there's no Napogue Castle distillery. It's branded as Napogue and it's a minimum 12 years old, as we can see on the label. Okay, um, Here's a great example from the Teeling Distillery. Now, the Teeling Distillery is one of the first to, uh, of the new age, of the new breed of distilleries to open up. Um, and it's been online since, I believe, 2014. They're now making their own Irish pot still whiskey. This is an example of Irish single grain whiskey right here. So very much like in Scotland, it's grain whiskey made from a multiple, I mean, a, a whiskey made from a multiple amount of grains. And here is another example. Here's Powers, which I think is maybe one of the best examples of what the old style Irish pot still whiskey uh, used to taste like right here. Uh, this, but uh, interestingly enough, it's made down at Middleton, right? So 
Most of these are made in Middleton. Uh, some of them are made up in uh, Bushmills. Um, here's here's West Cork. Um, initially, when they started uh, when they started out, they were sourcing their whiskey. You now that's how you get a ten year old whiskey out of a distillery that's only been around for three years. But um, now they're actually coming out with a fully aged, and uh, they've been around for a while, uh, fully aged and matured, uh, coming from their own stills. Um, so that's pretty much the entirety of Irish whiskey. It's going to be the category that is on fire uh, throughout the next couple of years. They, we estimate some, something like 45 new distilleries will be opened. Primarily what they're all doing right now is they're sourcing from one of those three. They're sourcing from Cooley. They're sourcing from up in uh, Antrim, up at Bushmills, or they're sourcing from down in... Um, uh, in Middleton, and then they're buying the barrels, and then they're doing a lot of really fancy, like, finishing with them. Like, for example, um, oh yeah, here's the guys from Glendala, right? So Glendala, this is a whis this is a distillery that doesn't have a whiskey of their own yet. They're buying barrels, and they're doing some really interesting barreling, right? They're doing some, uh, some interesting finishing. So, that's what Irish whiskey looks like. Um, Thanks for stopping by. Uh, that was a breathtaking uh, um, uh, tour through Ireland. And we'll talk a little bit about, I think, bourbon. We're going to do bourbon next time that we're uh, together. All right. Thanks. I'll see you soon.